Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Atenas and this is Mode Bespoke. For today's project, we are working on a pair of summer shorts. Now these summer shorts, you can make them in any size you want. Um, these are for a kid, so these are really small. They're for my little girl. But you can make them in any size you want and for anyone you want. Um, you can also use any yarn you choose. You can use any size and any size hook. We are going to be using both Tunisian crochet and regular crochet to make this project. So let's get started. So here's the pair of shorts I have. They are kind of, well, they're pretty small and they're for a four year old. So I used a pair of her shorts that fit her a little bit big to get the measurements I need for her size specifically. And then I made the bottom part, the leg part, a little bit wide so she's got some space to grow into them. Um, they do stretch a little bit. Uh, this is also worked in Tunisian crochet. The top is worked in regular crochet and it's the elastic band at the top. So it's gonna be really, really stretchy. We're gonna be using the ribbing that you've seen in a lot of other tutorials, like in all of the beanies that I have posted. So it's pretty stretchy. We're also gonna use that same ribbing down at the legs so that it also stretches. Now for the measurements, I just grabbed a pair of shorts that fits um, my little girl a little bit big, but you can do this for anyone um, if you're gonna make it for an adult. Just grab a pair of shorts that fits you or whoever it is comfortably and you get those measurements. If you don't have a pair because these are gonna be a gift, I will provide you with standard US sizing measurements um, for shorts on the blog. So check out the link in the description box below to get that information. But to get started, I'm just gonna grab the shorts and I'm going to look for the widest side of the shorts. So the elastic band is a little too narrow, so her hips won't fit. So get to the largest, widest part of the shorts and measure there. So just grab a measuring tape and run it across. So in order for these shorts to fit my little girl, they need to measure 11 and a half inches. So they'll need to be 11 and a half inches across. So times two on that will be 23 inches. So we need to make our foundation chain at least 23 inches. Now, the stitch I'm using is the knit stitch in Tunisian crochet. It does shrink when you crochet it. So instead of having the 23 inches that I'll need for this project, I'll have to add, because when I uh, Tunisian crochet, my, my crochet shrinks about 20%. So I will need to add 20% more to that uh, initial change in order to end up with a project that is 23 inches around. So if you don't know how to calculate that, you can use the 20% I normally use, or you can crochet a small piece, just maybe a five by five or a 10 by 10, using the knit stitch and measure your chain initially when you first start, and then work a couple of inches of that pattern and then measure it again and see what the difference is. That's going to be your shrink percentage. So. If you don't want to calculate that, again, you can use the 20% I, go, I normally use. That's how much um, my Tunisian crochet will shrink. And I'm, I don't crochet with a lot of tension. So if you crochet with a lot of tension, I would add maybe a little bit more to that. Um, uh, otherwise, your project will shrink just a little bit more. So let me clear all this up and let's get started. So I will be using the leftover Karen Big Cakes yarn I had from the swimsuit cover-up video I posted a few weeks ago. This is all that was left, so I'll be using this to make a pair of shorts. It is a medium size yarn, but you can use any yarn you want for this pattern since we're gonna be using measurements instead of stitch counts. So any yarn you wanna use will work just fine. On the label for this yarn, um, it suggested using a six millimeter crochet hook. So I will be using a six millimeter Tunisian hook. If you're not sure what size hook to use, I go up about two numbers. So if this is a size four yarn, I'll go up two more millimeters on that. So I'll, I'll go to a six, um, six millimeter hook. So if you're using a two, I'd go to maybe a four and then give that a try. The goal is to make the stitching so that it's not, um, so that you can't see through it. 
So once you get to the elastic, that's more okay, or here up at the top, it's a little more closed up because this is the important part that needs to cover everything. So I didn't want my stitching to be too wide. So that's why I only went with the two um, sizes higher than the yarn itself. So to get started, let me zoom in here and we'll get started with a slip knot. So to make the slip knot, wrap the yarn around two fingers and then you're gonna grab your hook and you will need a Tunisian hook. So I will be using my blanket Tunisian crochet hooks, but they do have them available in aluminum as well. So just check your local craft store and you will find some. So I've made my loop and now you just insert your hook into the loop and you pull the yarn through. Then I'll just hold it down with my index finger, remove the fingers of my left hand, and then I'll tighten the knot by pulling on the two threads right here. So our slip knot is nice and tight, and you don't need to work this pattern in multiples of anything. We are just using measurements. So we'll just start our chain, and for anyone unfamiliar with how to make a chain, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your yarn, you're gonna yarn over, and you're gonna pull this top loop through this bottom loop. So yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. So I'm going to make a chain. Like I said, I needed a I need 23 inches in order for it to fit uh, on my kid if I'm going to make these shorts that so that they fit her. So 20% added to that makes a chain of 27 and a 27.6 inches, so about 27 and a half. So I'm going to make a chain that measures 27 and a half inches and then I will see you again here in a moment. All right, so here we go. My chain is 27 and a half inches. And if you're still a little unsure about how to do the math to figure out how long your initial chain needs to be, go check out the blog. I'll walk you through the math and that way um, you can also add about 20% to your chain. And it's, it's really not complicated at all. It's, it's super easy math, but I'll walk you through that in the blog. The link is in the description box below. So now for our next row, let me get a little more yarn. We're gonna go right into the stitch right next to our hook. You're gonna insert your hook, and then you're gonna yarn over, and you're gonna pull up a loop. So when you pull your hook out, you'll be left with this loop. You're gonna pull a loop up for every stitch that you have on your chain. So at the end of this, my hook is gonna be full of loops. So let's go to the next stitch. We're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, and then you pull your hook out, and you leave the loop on your hook. So we go to the next one, insert our hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So just keep pulling up a loop for every single one of the stitches on the chain. Okay, so I pulled up a loop for every stitch on the chain, and as you can see, my crochet hook is completely loaded up here. And now we're gonna work what is called a return pass. So in Tunisian crochet, you need to go all the way back. So much like when you do regular crochet that you work all the way to one side and then you turn your work around and work the other way around when you're working a flat project. The same happens in Tunisian crochet. So when you load up the stitches, you're working in this direction, unless you're left-handed. And then what you do is you chain one and you have to go back the other way. So instead of turning your work around, you're only working on one side of the stitch. So it's here, so I'll show you here. So you'll have this stitching visible on this side, which is the front of our work. And then on the inside, it looks like knit work. So this is what the back will look like. So you only ever really work one side on Tunisian crochet. There are techniques to do a double-sided reversible Tunisian, um, but for this particular project, we don't need it to be reversible. So we've already loaded up all of our stitches and now we have to work our return pass. So just like you work in all of your crochet projects, you usually start with a chain one or chain two, depending on whatever stitch you're working on. It's the same when you're working in Tunisian crochet. So to make that chain one, we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull our hook through this first loop. So let me remove that chain. So the very first loop, or the very last one that we loaded up, we're gonna 
pass our hook through that loop. So you yarn over and pass through the one loop. So that would be equivalent to our chain one. Now for the next few rows, you're gonna yarn over, I'm sorry, loops, for the next few loops. We're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops. So you're gonna pull through this one, so that's one. And we're gonna pull through another one, two. So let's do that again. Yarn over and pull through two loops. So you go one, two. Yarn over, pull through two. There's one, two. We're just gonna keep doing this until we have one loop left on our hook. So just yarn over and pull through two. Okay, I've reached the last few stitches on my return pass. So I've got my last two loops. So I just yarn over, pull through two, and I'm left with just one loop on my hook. And here is our return pass. So now, we're gonna start making the knit stitch. So to create this look, we're gonna start by working into this second vertical stitch of the row. We're always gonna ignore this one unless you need to increase, but we don't need to increase right now. We just need to work a nice long rectangle so that we can create the body of the shorts. So to do that, if you look at the work, so turn your work over to the side, you're gonna see that there are two loops. So you have a vertical stitch this way, and if you turn it just a little, it's made up of two loops. So there's this back loop and the front loop. You're gonna insert your hook in between. So right in between these two stitches. So let's get started. We're gonna go into, not the first one, skip the first one, go into the second one, and insert your hook in between both of these loops. So right in between and all the way through. Now you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull up a loop. There you go. Now you move on to the next one. If you're not sure where the loop is, just hold it straight like this so that you see the vertical line. And then you'll find your stitch and go right through that. So there are my two loops. So here's the front part and here's the, or I'm sorry, here's the front part and here's the back part. I'm gonna go right through those. So insert my hook right through, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So go to the next one, insert my hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. We're gonna do this in every stitch of the row. So just keep loading up stitches onto your hook and I'll see you again in a moment. So I've made it to the end of the row. I have just another stitch left. So see, here's my vertical line right there. So just insert my hook, pull up a loop. And now we're left with this last stitch right here, the row. So as you can see, it's just kind of knotted up here, but you have this section down here that has two loops. So where this yarn loops up this way, that's where you're going to insert your hook. And this is at the end of every row. This does count as a stitch. This is our chain one, so don't skip it or your work is gonna to start to narrow up. So insert your hook right through like that. So right behind both of these loops. And then yarn over and pull up a loop. I'll show you again in the next row as well. So now that we've loaded up all of our loops, we're gonna do a return pass. So just like we did in the previous return pass, you're gonna yarn over and pull through one loop, and there's our chain one. Now the rest of the row is worked as a yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And we're just gonna do this for the rest of the row until you have one loop left on your hook. So we're at the end of the row. So here we finished up our return pass. And here's what our work looks like so far. So for the next row and every other row, because this is just a two row repeat. So you're gonna do the same thing when you're loading up all of the loops on your hook and then you always have to work a return pass. So that's all you do, it's just a repeat. So like we did in the last row, 
we are going to skip the first stitch. So always skip this first stitch. Go to your next vertical stitch, and then there are the two loops. So you're gonna insert your hook right between the two, all the way through, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So there's my vertical stitch. Go right through the two loops and pull up a loop. And that's it. You're just gonna do this until you get to the height that you need for the shorts that you wanna make. So again, if you don't have a pair of shorts that you're measuring that you're working off of, that's okay. I've got standard US sizing for clothing and I threw um, different sizes in there for kids and adults. So if you choose to make this for an adult as well, all, that's, all that information will be on there. So if you're not quite sure what to measure, let me show you. Let me put this aside. All right, so lay these out. You're going to measure from right below the elastic because we're going to make an elastic band. So we'll make this. So don't include the, the elastic in your measurement. So place your measuring tape right below it and just go down. So lay the shorts flat and just measure down to here. So I need almost seven. So six and three quarters is about what I need for these shorts. Now, if you choose to make a really thick elastic, which is what I did here, um, I went a little bit shorter. So I just made six inches worth of um, height on my uh, crochet work. Then I stopped at about the six inch mark and then I just made a thicker elastic. So for these, I'm not gonna make as thick an elastic band. So I'll crochet until I reach nearly the seven inches and then we'll keep going from there. So as I was working this very last row for the almost seven inches worth of Tunisian crochet I was working on, I ran out of yarn. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to show you how to switch yarn colors um, in case you're getting a new skein or you're changing your yarn or anything you wanna do. So I am currently in the middle of my return pass and I need to switch this yarn. So I got something that was similar size um, you, this is the same lavender yarn you guys have seen in the past few tutorials. It's just the never ending super saver skein. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up both threads like so, and then I'm just going to wrap them around my index finger and knot them up together like that. So then you just have to tighten them, tighten them as much as you can. And every, all the threads that you can pull on, just pull on everything. Make sure it's super, super tight because we're gonna cut off these little ends. So we want this to be as tight as possible so that it doesn't loosen up at any point and then just unravel our work. Um, if you are concerned with uh, about that, I suppose, you can leave these little tails on there. Just continue to crochet and at the end of your work, you can weave these in. Um, I, however, am okay with just cutting them off. I've done this a few times and I've never had any problems so long as this knot is super, super tight. So there we go. I've added my new yarn and now I can finish my return pass. So get everything tightened up and then just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two until I finish this row. Okay, so I finished the return pass switch the colors you can see the tiny knot back here if your knot ends up in the front you can just use a smaller crochet hook to pull it towards the inside of your work or a yarn needle anything you can just pull it and flip it so that it's on the inside instead anyway so we've reached the end now we have to make the legs so this bottom part that we started with and something you can you probably notice is that this is curling up this is normal in Tunisian crochet if this were to be a blanket you can always um, do some, just steam it a little bit. Just make sure you never put the iron on the work. Just hover your iron with steam above it or use a handheld steamer. We are going to be adding an edge to it though. So it's, it doesn't matter that it curls up because as soon as you add some of this other stitching, 
or the stitching at the bottom, the ribbing, it will lay your, your work flat. So this one was as curled up as this work is, but you couldn't tell since I've already added all the edging to it. The same happens if you make a Tunisian crochet blanket. It'll curl up like this, but if you do a nice border around it, maybe at least an inch um, all around your blanket, it'll flatten out your blanket. So, and then it softens up as you wash it as well, and it, it loosens up uh, the stitching so that you don't have problems later. Anyway, so to work on the legs, we need two legs, of course. The seam is gonna be in the back of our shorts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in half. So grab the other short end, line up your edges, and then go all the way to this side. And we're gonna, we're gonna keep working where our yarn is. So this is gonna be the top of um, our shorts. So we want to put a stitch marker on our working side. So just make sure you line everything up, go all the way to this end, and find the centermost stitch. You can use anything you want as a stitch marker. A bobby pin, which I normally use. You can use uh, a safety pin, anything you want. I'm gonna grab a bobby pin, and I'm just going to place it right in this middle stitch. So then this is gonna be halfway on the pant leg. So we're gonna keep extending this side of the shorts so that when we sew them like this, we will have the leg on either side. So let's get everything lined up and we're gonna start making the ribbing for the bottom part of the leg. And to do that, normally with Tunisian crochet, you have to do something that is called a bind off when you are through stitching because as you can tell, well kind of, these top stitches have a bit of a space. See, there's a bit of a gap between the nice little Tunisian crochet and this top end. You usually have to get rid of this end. You can do it by using either a uh, single crochet or a slip stitch. We, however, are gonna continue to crochet. So I'm just gonna crochet my double crochets right into these stitches. So, because this is gonna be a series of double crochets. So for our first row of double crochets, we need to start with a chain two. So I'm gonna chain one and then two. Now, just like we did in all of this Tunisian crochet, I'm going to crochet, er, crochet right into the stitch. So here's my vertical stitch, here it is sideways. I'm gonna stitch right in between these two um, loops. So I'm gonna yarn over insert the hook into the stitch, so go right through, yarn over, and pull out the hook. I will have three loops on my hook, at which point we will yarn over and pull through two. We'll be left with two loops on the hook, so then you yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. Let's do that again, but I need to grab a little more yarn. All right, so for a double crochet, you are gonna yarn over Insert your hook into the stitch. Remember to go through between both of these loops, okay? So go through those, yarn over, and pull your hook out. We've got three loops. You're gonna yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Let's do this together one more time and I'll zoom in. So here we go. So yarn over. Insert your hook between these two stitches and go all the way through. Yarn over and pull up your loop. Then you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you're gonna make a double crochet in every stitch until you reach your stitch marker. So get to this last stitch right here and I will meet you here in just a moment. So we reached the stitch marker and I've already gone through and made my last double crochet. So now for the next row, we're gonna start with a chain two. So we chain one, two, and then we're gonna turn our work around. So here we're gonna work on the ribbing. So the ribbing is made up of alternating your double crochets. So you're gonna make a back post double crochet, which is this one, and then a front post, which is this one that comes up. 
So if you look at this, you have back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post, front post. So that's what we're going to set up now. And then it's just repeated to every row. So you work a front post in right where you worked a front post double crochet and a back post in where in the stitch that you worked a back post in. So we're going to do that here. So our first double crochet, let's try to move this here. You're going to see the stitches up on top. We're going to work on the actual post, which is down here. So this big space down there. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to work a front post double crochet. So your hook is going to go through the back of the post and come out the other way. And notice it's on the post, not on the stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull your hook out. And then you just finish your double crochet. The next one needs to be a back post. So you yarn over and this time you're going to pull your hook in front of the post. So come in through the back, push the post back, and then come out the other side. So here's the post. If you look at it in the front, you've pushed the post to the back. You yarn over and pull your hook out, and then you just finish the double crochet. So that was a back post. This next one is a front post. So we yarn over, we insert our hook behind the post, so see we're pushing it forward. So when you push the post forward, it becomes a front post double crochet. And we finish the stitch. This one is a back post. So we yarn over, come up through the front, push the post back, and then yarn over, and we finish the double crochet. So there we go. Slowly starts to take shape. So you'll see your front post double crochet, in the back post, front post, back post. Continue alternating until you get to the end of the row. So here we are at the end. I have one final post and then I have my chain. So this I worked as a front post double crochet so I will need to work this one as a back post double crochet. There we go. And now we're left with our chain. So you do need to crochet into the chain so that you can retain the same stitch count. So for this, we're just gonna double crochet right into this space. So like so, and then just finish your double crochet. So now we chain two, turn our work around, and you're gonna repeat this as many times as you want in order to make the leg part of your shorts. So if you want these to be you know, Bahama shorts, then you'll probably need to make these longer. So I would probably do that if these shorts were to be for a little boy. I would probably crochet a, a good bit, maybe about five or six rows just to begin and then maybe have them try it on at that point. So just kind of hold it up over their leg and just make sure that that's as long as you want it to be. Um, or, you know, just kind of go, go from there. If these are for a little girl and you want them a little bit shorter or they're for you and you want them shorter, you can stop here. I'm gonna make one more row of this so to do that, and this is just so that you can also see um, how to add rows in case you want to make a really long ribbing. So if, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but this front post is, but this first post is a front post double crochet. So if you can't see it clearly, you see this little line? That means this stitch right here is a back post double crochet because there's a line going through it. This one doesn't, it's just a straight post. So these are front post double crochets. So after you chain two, you're just gonna insert your hook. Oh, we yarn over, sorry. We insert our hook behind the post, and then we finish our double crochet. We're gonna work a back post double crochet into this one. You're gonna see all these squares. So the top part are the stitches. You're gonna work into these squares right here. So these little guys. So you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into that space, push your post backward, come out the other side, and then yarn over and finish your double crochet. This next one, we're gonna work as a front post, and then we're gonna work the next one as a back post. 
So there we go. So you can just extend this and make it as long as you want. This is the last row I'll do on this side, and then I will begin again right where I left off on this side to make this side of the, the shorts leg. So when you start on this side, what you'll need to do, here, let me grab a little bit of yarn. I use my stitch marker to hold this stitch in place so that I don't lose it. And what you're gonna do is normally you just leave a nice long tail end of yarn. We'll weave that in later. So I'm not cutting the yarn since I'm still working with it. But you're gonna go into the next stitch so this one, insert your hook all the way through and then yarn over. Remember to leave a tail end of yarn so that you can weave it in later and make sure it won't become unraveled. And then holding both of your threads, you're gonna do your first chain. So you, we had to chain two to work our double crochet. So with the first one, you use both threads of yarn. You're gonna chain one drop the tail end that you're not that you're not using and with your working yarn make another chain there we go we have our chain two and now you just go into the next stitch so yarn over and then double crochet and yarn over and double crochet in the next stitch and there you go you've just started on the other side then you repeat the same number of rows you did here so I'm going to do three rows on this side so the first row of double crochet the, and then the two rows of extended front and back posts. So once I finish those, we'll start working on the ribbing for the top part. So we've gone through and finished the ribbing on both sides of the shorts. So each of the legs has the ribbing and there is still a bit of a curl as you can see. But when you fold it, so this is one of the legs and you're gonna fold this over and join these two so that you have one of the legs. You get rid of some of the curl and then once we sew it all together you won't have any more curl here. Um, we have to do the ribbing at the top and we're going to work the same way that we did the ribbing here at the bottom. So I'll get you started on that really quickly but for the ribbing here at the top if you use the same hook that you used for all of this other stuff you're going to end up with a really wide elastic band at the top so we want it to be a little more narrow. So what I did is I switched hooks. So this is a 4.25 millimeter or a G hook and I'm going to do all of the ribbing in this one. You can even go so small, you can even go as small, excuse me, as an F hook as well. So we're going to wrap our yarn. Let me zoom in. There we go. You can go and um, you can go through and weave in these ends if you want. I'm just going to tuck them up here on top and hide them. So I'm going to stitch in between the little V's. So that's where I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to leave a long tail of the uh, lavender thread and pull the loop through the stitch. And now we're going to chain one with both threads of yarn. So we chain one and then we drop this thread and then we chain a second stitch. So I'm going to hold all of these threads down just to make it a little easier to hide them. And I'm going to go into the next stitch. So just yarn over, insert your hook into that little V, and pull up a loop. And then you double crochet. Go into the next one. So we yarn over, hold these down, insert your hook into that stitch, pull up a loop, and finish your double crochet. The rest of the work is done the same way as you did the ribbing here at the bottom. So make sure you go through the same stitching. So if you're going to go through the V's, go through the V's. If you prefer to work in these little spaces, you can work in there as well. Just pick one and stick with it. So I'm going to work inside the V's. So I'll keep making my double crochets in each of the V's so that I don't increase. So I'll do a few more and then I'll let you go and finish the rest of this on your own. So here's the V, and we double crochet. You look for the V, and I have to hold these down, and we double crochet. There we go. 
So I'll keep working this all the way around. I'll, I'll do a few rows to finish the ribbing, and then I'll show you how to sew all of this together. So to begin sewing, this is the back inside part of our Tunisian crochet. So here's the pattern itself. So this is the design that we want on the outside. So turn the fabric over and line up the two little legs. So where these two meet. And that's where we're gonna stitch on this side and fold the other side to meet up with it. And then we'll stitch this down here to the middle and then we'll stitch each of the legs at the end. So we're gonna line up our work and then I've already threaded my needle and I've made a little knot at the end. So I've knotted all of this up. I'm gonna start here at the top. And I'm gonna stitch these two ends together. So line up the little corners and then just kind of stitch them up really quickly. So I'm gonna double it up just to make sure that it is firmly sewed together. And for these, I'm just gonna stitch through like this on one side, and then I'm gonna go this way on the other side. Just do that all the way down the purple, so we're all the way down our elastic band. So I'll work on this quickly. Make sure that your stitches are nice and small, otherwise when they pull on this um, to put the shorts on, this might pop open. So make your stitches quite small and take your time. Okay, when you get to the bottom of the elastic, give that an extra stitch through. So I'll do one across, and then I'll do one more, just to make sure that that is all secure. Now for this part of the work, let me line this up a little more so you can see it, zoom in a bit. So for this next part of the sewing, what you're gonna look for is you're gonna turn your work around and you're gonna see these stitches on the side. So they look similar to these, but they're on the side of your work. We're gonna work into those on both sides. So you're gonna take your needle. You see where, let me see if I can hold it a little better. Go. So if you can see where the V is, so see there's the top part of the V, and here's the top part of the V. It's a little easier to see it if it's in front of your face, so it looks very similar to this. So if you work into those, you're going to stitch in to the bottom part of a V, so I have one down here. You're gonna pull up your needle on this side. Then you're gonna turn your work and do it on the other side. So there where the V is, and you come in, you come out in the middle of the V. And now you're gonna to go to this side and right where your thread came out, so here's where the thread comes out, you're gonna go right into that stitch again. So that's where you're gonna insert your needle and then come out on the stitch above it. So right in the middle of the stitch above it. And then do the same on this side. So this is where the thread comes out. Go into this stitch and come out the top stitch. Do the same on this side. Go into that stitch, so in where that stitch came out. So it was gonna be this one, go out the top. The top one's just a little awkward to see with the lighting. So our thread came out on this stitch, so we go into this stitch and come out the top one. So just keep working your way up, sewing slowly, and then every couple of stitches you can go through and tighten it up a little bit. Don't make it too, too tight. You need to tighten it up a little bit and then loosen it up just a tad. Go through and work all the way to the top. Okay, so I stitched all the way up to the top, and now we have to stitch the two little legs. 
So if you used the same color yarn as the rest of the stitching down here, it's a little easier to just loosen it up and you won't be able to see the thread. But I have to tighten this a little bit just to make sure that my purple thread is hidden and you can't see a line of the purple thread. All right, so we have the two open parts and we have the two legs. So you're gonna line up this bottom part and this bottom part, and we're gonna give that a stitch. So this one, we're just gonna hold them together and then just stitch right through. And I'm just gonna go working on this side. Just stitch up the side using whatever stitch you want. Unless you have color changing yarn here, then you might wanna use the same stitch that you use down here. But since mine is all the same color, I'm just gonna stitch this up like this. Give the bottom part a couple of extra stitches just so that this doesn't tear open. Then go through and knot up your yarn and hide it. So I'm going to weave in my ends here on the inside of the shorts. So just like I did when I weaved in the end of the top, I'm just gonna do a couple of stitches going just on one side of the work. And I'm gonna switch directions several times. There we go. Pull that tight. Give that a bit of a tug. There we go. So we have one side done. Now we just have to sew up the other side. And then if you want to hide this a little bit more, just give it a couple of tighter stitches. So I'll probably start on this end and then stitch down here and give it a few tight stitches. Then I'll weave in my ends and that's it. So here are the shorts. There you go. Now if you want to do something extra and add some little pockets or something, you can use this same stitch or just a simple um, crochet and make a small little pocket, either for here or for the back. But that's it. So we have two little pairs of shorts and these are ready to go for summer. Don't forget to stop by the blog to get your copy of the free pattern for this project and many other projects. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I post videos every Thursday. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm also open to suggestions for different video tutorials. So if you have any suggestions for another project you'd like to see, leave it down in the comments below. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see any more of my projects. Don't forget to like and share if you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you again next week.